All right, so we've got the unit powered up. I threw a USB drive that had some WAV files on it. So this is a 40 hertz WAV file. I would have generated this at max possible signal. So we have volume 30, it's all the way up. Oscilloscope shows that essentially we're not getting any clipping. Oh wait, let me actually start it. So take the volume all the way up. Shows that we're not clipping. Output voltage shows a little less than a volt. We can change the volume up and down. It's not a very strong output, but it is a fairly clean output. The, re the way that I'm measuring this, by the way, is I'm running from the head unit RCA outputs into an external sound card, which is the USB pre, USB pre from sound devices, and that's just simply being monitored by the computer running true RTA. So we're going to do a quick test on, I'm going to show you how an RTA can identify clipping. So we have this Xtron's head unit here. I have the output running into an external sound card, which is then running into a laptop, which is going to run true RTA. And then I have a uh, DMM that's going to show me basically voltage. So I'm using the Audio Sound 2000 Disc 102. And I'm choosing this because it specifically clips the signal so you can see what it looks like. So that's on purpose. So let's go to 50 hertz tone, clipped 14 seconds in all high bits. Take the volume all the way up. Let's go ahead and change the averages. to two. So now that's clipping. That's what clipping looks like from a signal standpoint and then that's what it looks like when you're not clipping. So let's take a look at that again. So no clipping. You get some harmonics but not too many. And then it clips and you get a lot of harmonics. Now that's essentially how your distortion detectors are working, right? They're playing a tone. They expect to see this. When they see other stuff, they're like, oh, you're clipping. People wonder sometimes whether or not if the distortion detectors or unwanted frequency detectors, as I call them, if they want, they wonder why some head units tend to look like they're clipping when they don't think they are. That's because there might be some other noise that is picking up. So remember, like the DD1 does not measure distortion. It does not actually determine whether something's clipping. It just simply looks for something that's living up here. Other detectors kind of do the same thing, but if you actually want to know whether or not it's clipping, this is a pretty good way to do it. It only needs a, something to run an RTA program in a sound card, tie it in, and then you can see whether you actually clip. You can also do something neat because you can look at the frequency response of your system. So let's do pink noise, uncorrelated. And now I can actually take a look and see the frequency response of the head unit. Let's go and look at, we got a filtered pink noise. So one third octave LCR, one third octave 100 to 200. Let's take a look and see what that looks like. You can see this is going to vary and you can see it's moving with time which is the point we can do one sixth octave instead. So if you're looking for crossover points, you can use this. If you're looking for whether or not your factory head unit has a weird equalization curve, you can use this process. And again, all you need is some sort of external sound card that accepts the output from your head unit and or amplifier. Of course, you can't run a fully amplified speaker output into a laptop sound card you might need like a line output converter to knock that down obviously pay attention to the voltage input ranges of your external sound card so then that way you don't overdrive it otherwise not only could you damage the audio equipment that's seeing a different load also understand that the rca inputs have a different impedance than what a speaker would so you don't want to accidentally overdrive that so as we're seeing one third octave pink noise jump from 100 to 200 during this video you've seen that peak kind of shift so if you have any other questions about this process, feel free to let me know.
We can give you some other examples here. This is an Alpine CDA 9887. These graphs illustrate the various crossover points, high pass filter at 1K at different slopes. You can see what that looks like. With the same head unit, I used the crossover points that I wanted to use for mid-base, mid-range, and tweeters, and graphed those as well so I could see what that looked like, kind of for fun. This is a 2014 Honda Accord. It has a pretty poor frequency response. You can see it's got a 80 hertz high pass filter and some wicked EQ. Uh, using a JL Audio VXI amplifier, I tried to flatten it and use this process so I could see what I was doing.